Um, but come on, let's jump in to the message today. We are going to be reading out of John chapter 20. And um, John chapter 20 is a fantastic passage passage of scripture in the Bible. We're really going to be talking through um, Thomas today. We're going to be talking about uh, Thomas, who was a disciple. He really dealed with a lot of doubt. He dealt with um, a lot of uh, confusion and figuring out where uh, Jesus was at in the story for him. And, um, you know, what we're going to pick up in this scripture, Jesus has already uh, gone to the cross. Um, in other words, maybe if you're new to church or new to um, reading your Bible, Good Friday has already happened. And now we're at Easter. So uh, the, t- the, the tomb is empty. The stone has been rolled away. And um, Jesus has visited about every person um, that we could think of except for Thomas. And um, so people are celebrating and people can't believe their eyes. And um, it is a incredible time. And uh, Thomas has not seen Jesus yet. So if you're taking notes, the title of my message today is I have to see it to believe it. I have to see it to believe it. Come on, let's pray. And then we're going to read this scripture and we are going to get on with this message. God, we love you so much. We are thankful for who you are. We're thankful for your word that is true, a word that is our guide, God. And we just thank you that you're with us today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen and amen. I know that you're not just typing amen. I know that you're saying amen because we are full of faith here at Zoe. Here is what John chapter 20 verses 24 through 31 in the message uh, translation. Here's what it says. But Thomas, sometimes called the twin of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we saw the master. But he said, Unless I see the nail holes in his hands, put my finger in the nail holes and stick my hand in his side, I won't believe it. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the room. This time, Thomas was with them. Jesus came through the locked doors, stood among them and said, peace to you. Then he focused his attention on Thomas. Take your finger and examine my hands. Take your hand and stick it in my side. Don't be unbelieving. Believe. Thomas said, my master, my God. Jesus said, so you believe because you've seen with your own eyes. Even better blessings are in store for those who believe without seeing. Have you ever been in a situation where something has gone terribly wrong and all of a sudden, everyone is kind of, collectively as a group, we all kind of know like this is a terrible situation, um, but everyone's kind of looking at you like, did you see, do you think it's that bad? Should we go, did you hear what they, should we go take a look at what just happened? I don't, I don't know. And the whole time you're like, I know, I know that you're looking at me for an answer, but I wasn't there when it happened. So I just, I just, I just need to see it for myself. I just, you, I hear what you're saying. I know what happened, but I just need to see it for myself. It will help me get some context around what you're saying. It will help me kind of figure out uh, what decision to make next, what the words out of my mouth are going to be next. But I just, I just need to see it for myself. That's where we're at uh, with Tom. Honestly, this is where we're at with 2020, to be honest. I've just, I've just stopped saying in my vocabulary, this is unbelievable. 2020, to be honest, probably has a lot of us saying, I just need to see it for myself. I actually can't believe that this is real. And um, I feel like a lot of us, uh, I get the sense that some people are saying, God, is this are you being serious right now? I need to see it for myself. And uh, maybe you're in a situation where you're like, I'm just not really sure um, how this present reality, does it change God? Does it change his goodness? Does it change who he is? But the present reality of our time and all our culture doesn't change who Jesus is. And this is what Thomas is dealing with in the passage. And Thomas, to be honest, gets written off as uh, someone who is a doubter, as someone who um, didn't have enough faith to believe that he could possibly see Jesus. And it's kind of just 
where we land with that. Thomas, the doubter, don't be Thomas, don't be the doubter. But this is so interesting. Jesus focused on what Thomas needed and he gave him exactly what it was that he needed in the moment. This is a lot like um, my two-year-old. My two-year-old is um, equal parts sassy and awesome. And uh, she has a, a lot of, uh, we're gonna say passion, And when she's throwing a tantrum or she's trying to get my attention and it seems like she's throwing a fit as a mom, as someone who loves her and is committed to her, I'm not listening to what she's saying. I'm hearing what she needs. So in this moment, Thomas sounds like he's doubting. And and what I love about Jesus, it doesn't say that Jesus corrects Thomas. It says that Jesus walks through a locked door and he focuses his attention on Thomas. This is what verse 27 says, then he focused his attention on Thomas. And then he tells him, take your finger, examine my hands, take your hand and then stick it in my side. Don't be unbelieving belief. If you're taking notes today, uh, point number one is Jesus is not afraid of your doubt. He's not. Jesus is not afraid of your doubt. Can you imagine I always like to put myself in the story um, and the passage of what's going on. I'm a little bit of a visual learner, so I like to understand all the characters of what's going on. And can you just imagine how Thomas is feeling, how confused he must be? Thomas was a disciple. It means he was rolling with Jesus and all of these people the whole time. And yet he's the only one who has yet to be, uh, yet to see Jesus. Jesus has not appeared to Thomas yet. And Thomas is saying, I just need to see it for myself. And Thomas, you can see he's processing a lot of what he knows to be true. He's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. Here's what what I'm going to say about this. I don't know. I'm just saying Jesus said, don't be deceived. Many are going to come in my name. And I just just need to make sure that this is true. This is actually, I wasn't there. I need to see it for myself. I just, I just need to make sure that this is who Jesus is. And you have to remember, Jesus didn't come back and make himself known to Thomas for eight days. We are not talking about eight days of our time. We don't like waiting eight days for anything. We don't even like waiting eight seconds. This is why we love TikTok. This is why we love Amazon Prime. I will go the opposite direction of where I'm going if I can shave off one minute of my commute. We don't like waiting. Can you imagine the confusion that Thomas is feeling in this moment and the doubt that he's carrying of saying, I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure this sounds like Jesus. I just, I just feel like I need to see it for myself. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I just need to see in that moment. And it was like everyone was completely convinced of Jesus except for Thomas. And maybe you're in a situation today where you're like, I, I'm frustrated. It feels like everyone seems to be completely convinced of my healing except for me. Everyone seems to be completely convinced of the goodness of God. Can they see what's going on around me? Everyone seems to be fully convinced of who you are, God, except for me. Is this okay? I just need to see it for myself. Be encouraged today. Jesus is not afraid of your doubt. He actually gives you everything you need in that moment. He is focusing on you. Now, I don't know uh, if you're someone that's like, I really, I, I hate attention. Don't sing happy birthday to me. Don't shout me out. Now, listen, I cannot relate to that. I'm the youngest of four. Your girl loves attention. But there's some people who are just straight up uncomfortable with the spotlight on them. And this is a moment in life where we get to choose, Jesus, I'm going to lean in to you even amidst my doubt because I know that you'll give me what I need. God wants your authenticity regardless of it, if it includes doubt. Your authenticity with your doubt, he can handle all of it today. Jesus is not afraid of your doubt. Now we can all kind of think back to an experience where you felt left out. 
I, um, again, I'm the youngest of four children. I love to be at the party. I love to be included. I love the attention. Um, if my siblings are watching right now, they're probably laughing. Um, and um, I, you know, the word FOMO, fear of missing out, I have it all the time. I want to be included all the time. And uh, what Thomas is probably experiencing is a level of missing out. It, this is a perfect example of this is um, a, a video goes viral on TikTok, Instagram, whatever you want. And um, p- people are like, have you seen this video? Oh my gosh, have you seen this? And I'm like, instantly something in me is like, I'm running to my phone to find it. And then I'm going to post it just to make sure you know that I saw it. I didn't miss out on it. And um, we really, we don't want to miss a thing. But what happens when you feel like you've missed out on God? What happens when you feel like, God, you have totally passed over me. You've come to everyone else except for me. I am missing out. God, where are you? I need to see you for myself. Number two, write this down. You haven't missed your miracle. You haven't missed your miracle. This is what the scriptures say. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the room. This time, Thomas was with them. You may have not seen it yet, but you have not missed it. You have not missed the miracle of God coming and sitting with you in your need, in your space, and wherever you're at in life. You have not been looked over by God. He's actually right on time today. Maybe this is your first time tuning in to church at home in a long, long time. Can I encourage you? You are right where you are supposed to be. You have not missed your miracle today. Look a little bit closer. You know, Thomas, Thomas got a bad rap. Man, people are like, whatever. Thomas is a doubter. Thomas is fake. Thomas needed proof. No, Thomas was actually a roll dog of Jesus. If you pay close attention to the scripture, It's not saying a random person on the side of the road was wondering if this was actually Jesus. No, this is saying a disciple of Jesus, somebody who was stuck to his side, somebody who rolled with him day in and day out and saw all of the miracles. I'm going to show you. John chapter 11, this is chapters before. This is before Jesus had already defeated death. And um, the disciples are talking to Jesus about Lazarus. Lazarus is a man that died. And Jesus is like, come on, let's go. We're going to wake Lazarus up. And the disciples are like, I don't know, fam, he's sleeping. Let's just not wake him up. There's a lot going on. And Jesus is like, okay, I'm just going to make it really clear to you. This is what he says in verse 14. Then Jesus made it plain to him. Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there because you now have another opportunity to see who I am so that you will learn to trust in me. Come on, let's go see him. And this is what Thomas says. So Thomas, nicknamed the twin, remarked to the other disciples, let's go so we can die with him. In other words, Jesus was always showing up before their eyes. Someone he loved, someone that he rolled with, someone that he trusted, someone that Thomas is like, no, 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 I actually know who Jesus is. He's used to Jesus showing up because that's what Jesus does for him. So in this moment, he's like, okay, I'm not really sure. It was uncommon. It wasn't uncommon for Thomas to expect for Jesus to show up. He was always showing up. And this is how good God is to Thomas. He said, Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. This, I'm making this up, by the way. I'm imagining day eight, Jesus comes. He's like, Thomas, hold up. Read what Thomas says. Sorry, Jesus says. When Jesus comes to the disciples the first time, he tells them to look at his hands and look 
at his side. But do you know what he says to Thomas? He tells Thomas to look and to see. In other words, I'm not shaming you for your disbelief or your doubt or whatever else somebody says that you're doing. I'm actually here to tell you I love you. I'm with you. I am the miracle right in front of you. And I'm giving you what you need in this moment from me out of my faithfulness because you already know how good I am. Sometimes you have to remind yourself of how good God is in your life. You have to remember the miracles that he's already done so they can sustain you as you wait for the miracles that he's about to do in your life because they're coming. Sometimes you're like, I don't know. I just got to see it to believe it. Jesus is on the way with a miracle for you. Even if you're saying, I just have to see it to believe it. And maybe, maybe you're just tired. Maybe you're like, I actually don't want to see it. And I don't want, I don't want to take a step. God, I already told you. What I'm waiting for. I already prayed this for 10 years. God's like, it's all right. I'll come back and visit you. I'll come back and do a work in you. I'll actually show up in more ways than you even need me to. You may be sitting here and saying, I don't know. I kind of feel like Thomas. I kind of feel like everyone around me has been visited by God except for me. But God is coming to spend time with you. Here's what he says in verse 29. Jesus responded, Thomas, now that you have seen me, you believe me. But there are those who have never seen me with their eyes, but have believed me with their heart. And they will be blessed even more. Verse 29 is not addressing Thomas's heart. It's addressing ours. Jesus is talking about us. Our blessing will actually be greater than the disciples because of our hearts that believe that Jesus is Lord. Our hearts that believe that our miracle is coming. Our hearts that believe that Jesus is not afraid of our doubt. Our hearts that believe that even though everything is happening around us and to us, that feel so out of our control. Jesus is still in control today. And I don't know, I don't know where you stand today, where your face at, what it's weathered. I can only imagine what your faith has weathered. But Jesus knows. And this verse, this whole story, it's addressing the skeptic in us. It's addressing the part of us that Jesus wants us to bring up to the surface. The part of us that's saying, I do feel a little overlooked, God. Can I say? Can I say that? Or does that make me doubting Thomas? If you say that, it makes you real. It brings up to the surface all of the things Jesus already knows how to address in you. My last point today, you could write this down. You can always come back to Jesus. This is my favorite part the least amount of words in all the verses. <laughs> Verse 28, it says, Thomas said, my master, my God. I love this part. Can you imagine how relieved Thomas must have felt when Jesus wasn't just like, here's proof right here for you. Jesus was like, no, 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 come here. Here's proof now, touch, touch it, come here come a little bit closer. I'm going to deal with you the way that you need to be dealt with because I know you. Come here. Come touch this. Come touch this. And what does Thomas say? He says, my master, my God, 
Do you know the feeling of when you see someone and you're like, oh, it is so good to see you. The relief of seeing someone, if you ever ran out of gas and you just like, you always have the friend that like has a gas tank in their car. And you're like, first of all, I don't know. I don't know what your mom did to make you so responsible, but that is awesome. Second of all, I am so glad to see you on the side of the road. Listen, I had no idea when the gas light turned orange. I thought that meant I had 10 extra miles. My bad, my bad. I'm so glad to see you or the friend that can fix everything. Maybe you're, uh, you've, been, you've renovated a house before or uh, just like me, you're trying to hang up a frame and uh, all of a sudden you're like, wow, I've hung up four frames. All of them are crooked. And uh, lo and behold, then comes a friend who can fix it all. And you're like, Ugh, I'm so glad to see you. Now I'm not gonna have to put more holes in my wall and get, not get my security deposit back in my apartment. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. We're all trying to get that security deposit back, but there's nothing like the relief of seeing someone and you're just like, oh, it's so good to see you. That's what Thomas felt in verse 28. It was almost like a, oh, there you are. It was a relief for Thomas to see Jesus. A relief moment for him of saying, oh, I knew you were there. I knew you were gonna show up. I just, I just needed to see it for myself. And for you today, where is Jesus for you? Maybe you're like, no, I actually still need to see him for myself because I don't know the Jesus that you're talking about. You're in a really good place today. Or maybe, maybe you've known Jesus your whole life and you didn't realize all you needed was to see him a little bit closer face to face. We can honestly, physically in our present reality, we can relate to that. There's nothing like seeing someone in person versus Zoom. It's why a few weeks ago, when our city and our nation is in an uprise over racism and tension, and hurt. Pastor Chad gets up here and says, I wish I could hug you because there's nothing like getting a closer look at someone who loves you and feeling the comfort of saying, ah, oh, there you are. So today, everything gets to change, everything. We don't have to live in a Jesus, where are you? I need to see you for myself. Jesus is already here. So this is what we're gonna do today. You get to take back your trials and turn them into your testimony. Take back your trials and turn them into your testimony. In Revelation, it says they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the power of their testimony. I don't know where you're watching from, but maybe you need to physically get out of your seat and saying, I'm standing on the word of God. I'm getting up. I'm taking the power in my testimony back. I'm putting Jesus back where he belongs on the throne. I think we need to take back from the enemy your destiny and your joy and your peace and your identity and you actually what you need to give back to Jesus is your failures and your fear and your anxiety and your addictions and the things that you're silently tormented over. Give them back to him. Every single time we pick up something that doesn't belong to us, aka Jesus already died on the cross for us. We put ourselves on the cross where Jesus actually belongs. So for you, give back what belongs to Jesus. It's not our place to carry the heavy 
burden Jesus already did. And every time we open up the Word of God, every time, like in Ephesians 6, we put on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sword of the Spirit, the gospel of peace on our feet. Every time we put that on, we see Jesus' hands and we feel Jesus' side and we're able to say, I saw it. I saw it and I believe it. Jesus, if you're looking for him, is in his word. If you're looking for him, he's not hard to find. He's in your daily conversation. And most of all, he's just, he's with you. He gave us his spirit to dwell in us until we meet him again.